The mountains of Montenegro fall away into the Adriatic. Its marinas and hotels rise in the other direction. The collision of ancient towns, exclusive islands and modern development is pulling in tourists and billionaire investors. Now it wants to join us in the EU. Yet, in a country of just 670,000, masses are marching, furious, that instead of benefiting from modernization, they're paying for it. This is the latest in a series of protests that's brought thousands of Montenegrins out onto the streets. Lepovi, they're shouting, thieves, accusing their political leaders of looting the country they helped to build. Vanya Kalevich leads a growing opposition demanding a clean break from a tainted past. She says the EU is ignoring the reality of corruption. Everyone is closing their eyes on the fact that we are living in a country where the government and executive and all parts of the power are closely linked to the organized crime. This is the man they blame, Milo Djukanovic, six times Prime Minister of Montenegro. He's filmed here helping Italian anti-mafia police with their inquiries. His name topped the indictment over an international cigarette smuggling conspiracy. The charges against him were eventually dropped, but protesters see Milo Djukanovic, who remains president of the country's ruling party, as a damaging influence. If you have a former prime minister accused for the smuggling in Italy, and if his best friends are mafia bosses, I mean, how can you say that we are not a mafia state? Controversy surrounding Mr. Djukanovic stretches back a long way. Just over 20 years ago, Milo Djukanovic became Prime Minister of Montenegro and ordered one of the infamous attacks of the Balkan Wars. From the high ground above Dubrovnik, his forces indiscriminately shelled the ancient city, causing international outrage. The seven-month siege left more than 100 civilians dead. In the bloody wars that tore Yugoslavia apart, Djukanovic supported the Serbs. His government handed over Bosnian Muslims, many of whom were murdered. Survivors were given compensation while his Croatian neighbours received an apology for the ruin in Dubrovnik. This is just before the siege of Dubrovnik. You see Djukanovic with the soldiers. With the Montenegro. This Montenegrin magazine has been pursuing him ever since, arguing he should be dealt with before the country joins Europe. I believe that Montenegro cannot be part of EU before we had Milo Djukanovic charged for the financial crime and for the war crimes. Uh, he actually made Montenegro as one of the most corrupted country in Europe. The charges that Mr. Djukanovic and his allies have maintained links with criminals forged during the war when Montenegro faced sanctions and relied on smuggling to earn money. At its height, cigarette smuggling kept Montenegro financially afloat using speedboats, up to 70 of them, according to Italian authorities. Every night they would tear across the Adriatic, carrying billions of untaxed cigarettes into Italy. From there, the Mafia would distribute them throughout the rest of Europe. The current Prime Minister admits his predecessor is controversial, but believes Milo Djukanovic has guided Montenegro towards EU membership. He still refers to him by his former title. Prime Minister Djukanovic was responsible for, uh, he was the leader of the pro-independence bloc. He was also, he, he was and he is still Western ally. And uh, it was him who helped Montenegro 
uh, uh, be granted Canada status for the EU. Mr. Jukanovic has been around in politics for 20 years and it's not easy to remain in politics in the Western Balkans and not to be treated fairly or unfairly as, uh, as controversial. The protesters are accusing your government of window dressing for corruption committed under the system of Milo Djukanovic. Mm. Do you recognise that? Uh, I, I think that everybody should be judged by merits. I think that Montenegro belongs to, well, I think rare number of rare group of countries that have managed to make progress on basically every internationally recognisable indicator. But outside the Prime Minister's office, protesters are demanding an investigation into the privatisation programme, which they say has broken the back of major industries like aluminium. We do not have factories anymore. Our major business is smuggling. We have a very nice view here. You will see that. Just across from the Monitor office is the headquarters of Perva Bank, or First Bank. Sold off by the state, it's partly owned and controlled by the Djukanovic family. The bank has funded a lot of the development along the coast, but there are new questions about its operation. We've obtained documents which show for the first time what was really going on inside the Djukanovic bank. This is a report from accountants Price Waterhouse. It shows that most of the money deposited at the bank came from public funds while two-thirds of the money handed out in loans went to the Djukanovic's and their associates. The report, which was never published, indicates that money went to companies linked to the convicted drug smuggler Darko Saric and other men indicted with Milo Djukanovic by the anti-mafia unit. Journalist Miranda Petrucic says the bank had been used as a personal cash machine. Uh, it was an uh, ATM for the private interests. Uh, I need to buy real estate? Hmm, where do I get money? I go to the bank. But no one noticed. Montenegro had unilaterally adopted the euro as its currency, the economy was booming and the coastline transforming. The country was excitingly recast, the obvious place to relaunch an icon of sophistication. You think it's this man, the chief? Which would explain how he could set up a high-stakes poker game at Casino Royale in Montenegro. But the financial crisis washed up here too, and the House of Cards collapsed. The Djukanovic government had to bail out the Djukanovic bank. I'll find the Madonna part. And then it had to be repaid. Confidential documents show a series of unusual transactions. The way they went is that the government wired one million, the Prova Bank wired one million back to the government. The government decided to wire another million, and the Prova Bank wired another million back, 11 times. So effectively, what was happening here? It was a ping pong in millions. So by the end of all that, the government had effectively picked up the tab, and that wasn't the only oddity. I think the most outrageous example we found came in 2008. The bank failed to pay its depositors on time, and yet they found seven and a half million dollars to bankroll a beach concert by Madonna. The money was supposed to come from private sponsors. Instead, it came mainly from public funds. Only last week, EU officials said corruption remained a serious concern. Others have been harsher. The influential foreign affairs magazine called Montenegro a mafia state, angering its prime minister. Uh, that, that is ungrounded. How can a country that is supposed to open accession talks next month with the EU, uh, which is selected among the 10 most committed to transparency reforms, be claimed uh, uh, the way it was claimed? Whatever the ructions over Greece, the accession of the Balkan states remains a priority for the EU. Perhaps a triumph of hope over experience, today the Commission said next month's talks will help bring Montenegro 
up to European standards.